If you want to learn something about God, shut your mouth and listen to me for a minute. Many, many children healed. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells have stopped. I don't make this stuff up. Behold the atheist's nightmare. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Warlocks are enemies of God. You know, no one's ever going to convince me. That, uh, that the Word of God is, is not true. You know if you put Jesus Christ first that He'll look after all your bills. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And if you want to tell me how to live my life, it better line up with the Word of God or shut your mouth. I'm loaded. I'm pregnant with miracles. What do you believe? Send us the cash. Welcome to the Bible Dumb Podcast. This is the podcast where two atheists read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm Davy Hell. I'm Josie Hill. And it is the last episode of Deuteronomy time. Yay! Yes, big, big news. I'm so happy to be done with Deuteronomy because I feel like I could be wrong. <laughs> feel like after Deuteronomy, we're, we're bound to like start getting like story times. Like, Start learning, meeting new people, going on adventures. Maybe. <laughs> like, actually, like, having some stuff that's not just, like, rules and stuff. Maybe. Maybe so. Well, let's finish this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 31. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. Wait, how am I going to do old circumcised lips, Moses? I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings and the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. I had to lose the old man voice because I can't do that for <laughs> yeah. the entire chapter. <laughs> Be strong and be of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the son of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and to all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua, and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. I'm sorry, what? Uh Uh-oh. He says, you're going to go sleep with the fishes, and your people are going to go start whoring about with other gods. Mm -hmm. Just what he's been warning them against, he says. That's what they're going to do. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. I think God is going to sing a song. (laughs) That's what it sounds like. (laughs) It's exciting. (laughs) And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about. Even now before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge, and said, Be strong, and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will fall you, befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Give ear, O ye he. (laughs) Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. (laughs) My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves, their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? 
Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. You gotta do this it. This isn't a song. You gotta it's do it. It's not a song. Well, you gotta make it a song. I need, like, some background music or something. Hold on. When the most high divided to the name. <laughs> <laughs> when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. To the Lord's portion, his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land <laughs> and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them. <laughs> so alone the Lord did lead them, and there was no strange God with him made with him a ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out the flinty rock butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of breed a bushon and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and now didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurum waxed fat, kicked, thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. I don't know. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. They have moved me with jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spin mine arrows upon them, and I shall be burnt, they shall be burnt with anger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and ye lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had hold sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For the rock is not as our rock, 
even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, and the cruel of venom of asps. Is it not this laid up in store with me, and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance, and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up for left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted, which he eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and I will reward them that hate me. <laughs> I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon my enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshua, the son of Nun. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody enjoyed that as much as I did. I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, God's message was a little weird. It was pretty weird. Did you catch any of it? I, caught a I was little kind bit of busy it. trying to like make it go in time with the music. I caught, I caught a little bit of it. Um, he definitely seemed to be like, you know, just trying to justify the bad things. He was kind of like, uh, I had to kill all y'all. Look at what y'all did to me. You know, he's <laughs> yeah, definitely you playing, made me do this. He's definitely playing the victim. The abusive dad. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what you made me do. You made me smack your wife. <laughs> smack. <laughs> you made me punch your mother. <gasps> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a very odd episode. <laughs> <laughs> and Moses and Moses. <laughs> And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto the, all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abarim, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel, at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither into the land which I give the children of Israel. So what did Moses do? says, because he trespassed among he trespassed against me among the children of Israel and the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. I guess that's when he defended the people against God, when they didn't want to go fight. Was that when that happened? I don't remember that. I don't know. All right, so 
God says, get up on that mountain and go die, Moses. Go look at what I promised you and your people, but don't get to enjoy it yourself. Dang. Yeah. Goodbye, Moses. Chapter 33. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun, when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou a help to him from his enemies. And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be thy holy one, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. Okay? They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Bless, Lord, this substance and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him and of them that hate him that they rise not again. All right. I didn't understand any of that. Paying attention? A little bit. All right. So he's blessing all these tribes of Israel with different blessings. Reuben said, let him live and not die. Judah, he said, let his hands be sufficient for him, that he's a help from his enemies, that the Levi's... I don't even know what the Levi's. The Levi's wouldn't make no sense. Well, moving on. And of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Okay. This is gibberish. And of Joseph, he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that croucheth beneath and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. I remember that. I remember when Joseph did that. <laughs> his glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. <laughs> There's unicorns again. <laughs> With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar, in thy tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain, and there they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of treasures hid in the sand. And of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he provided the first part for himself, because there, in a portion of the lawgiver, was he seated, and he came with the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord, and his judgments with Israel. Oh, so Gad's like the, uh, the beheader, the executioner. Oh. That's what it seems Eek. like. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. 
And Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. But these people are dead. These people are long dead. Like, I do not... But it's sort of like kids, right? Well, yeah, I guess he's talking to the tribes, but yeah. what does that mean for a tribe to dip their foot in oil? Like, I don't know. It's going like way over my head. I don't understand any of it. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none unlike to the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Who is Jeshurun? I don't know. Who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. This feels like a Stephen King ending. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just like something random appears that like, has I'm never done. been referred to. I'm done. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. That's definitely how just I'm feeling. Finish. <laughs> I'm bored with this story. On to the next. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall to say, destroy them. Israel shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. <laughs> They're all like, okay, Moses. <laughs> it's like an old man just like rambling. <laughs> How old did he say he was? Like 120? Mm, are we only getting that old now? Yeah, that's all we're doing. Last chapter. Chapter 34. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab into the mountain of Nebu to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Nephtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor, but no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord had sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. The end. So it said that Moses pretty much was fine. He could have lived several more years. Yeah, it said he still had good eyesight yeah. and was like in healthy. And God was just like, you're done. You're done. You can't. Well, they got there. They're there. They're there yeah. looking at the land of milk and honey. Yeah. So wow. which, so that's the end of Deuteronomy. I 
Uh, we finished it. I definitely liked Deuteronomy more than Leviticus or Numbers. Well, I think this is because it moved faster. Yeah. Um, but still not great. Oh, no, not great. What do you think the less... Not like, to sum up Deuteronomy, like, I would say Deuteronomy was just basically, like, the the cliff notes. Like, it basically said everything from Leviticus and Numbers, but in a short, more concise way. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Like, because even though we did all the same shit and got all the same rules and everything, it wasn't quite as boring as, like, when we were going through Leviticus. Yeah, Leviticus was was tough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Carrie um, was going through, uh, shout out, listener Carrie, what's up? Uh, she was going through Curtain Talk oh. yesterday and put a comment on there that just said, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel too. I feel like I just survived. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that was smart to read the the song like that, <laughs> the way we did. Because... No, I liked it. Okay, well, that's good because I like understood not a word I was saying. Like I was just literally yeah. just reading and trying to make it make <laughs> in line with the music. No, I thought it, I thought I was listening pretty fairly well. I don't remember any of it, but <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear it when I go back and edit. All right. Well, I mean, I don't really have any like major thoughts on Deuteronomy. Like, I don't really like all the rules yeah. are pretty dumb. They're pretty dumb. They're outdated. What about Moses? What do we think about Moses overall? Now that we've gotten we've gone from birth to death. Final thoughts on Moses? Um, final thoughts on Moses. He he's a ring wraith. <laughs> what? A ring wraith? Yeah. How so? I got to hear more. Okay, so he's basically just a tool of Saruman. Sauron? Of Sauron. He's just a tool of Sauron. And, and God is Sauron? Who's Sauron in this analogy? I mean, I guess so. Huh. Okay. <laughs> right? He's He's sent out as a servant of this person this mythical person you Mm -hmm. know and doing quite a few evil things taking over lands yeah burning shit down creating death and destruction along his way for sure yeah he's ring right okay (laughs) i like that (laughs) yeah i would see my analogy that i was gonna do was uh not ring wraith. I was gonna say he's. Oh my god! Who's the founder of Scientology? Oh, um, oh, L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I was gonna say he's L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically a guy who just made up like all these rules and like this bogus spirituality and convinced a whole bunch of people to go out and. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what my takeaway was. He came out sounding like a cult leader. Oh, for sure. And I don't mean like the way that we insult religion by saying it's just a cult, but like an actual, an actual... like David Koresh, Jim Jones, mm-hmm. Jordan Peterson, <laughs> <laughs> just like cult figure who uses his charisma to lead a bunch of people to do some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the crazy shit was conquer a bunch of cities and kill a whole bunch of people. Yeah. I think both can be true. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, Um, kind of a bummer. Like, I really wanted to like Moses at the beginning of this whole thing when we got him in Exodus. And he just went downhill quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a pretty cool little beginning and... Yeah, I was rooting for him. Yeah. I was like, oh, these assholes are keeping you enslaved? Get out of there, man. Yeah. He really blew it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, who's, 
Who's next? Joshua. Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. Um, we know some Joshuas. Yeah. Um, can we have a reminder to set us up for the next chapter? Chapter book. 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 Yeah, book. Um, on what's the story again? We don't know anything about Joshua. I don't remember him. He just showed up. And okay. Like, he's been he mentioned up, several times, but like, he hasn't done anything. He's, he's the son of none? Like, where, where are they getting that? Do we know? No, it's just who he is. Okay. All right. Like, like they, we literally know nothing about Joshua other than that he's been chosen as um, Moses' replacement. Okay, for a second here, I was thinking like, was I really not paying attention? Did Cause... Moses have any kids? Oh. I know he got married. He married the Ethiopian lady. I don't remember it saying him that he had any children. I don't children. remember. Interesting. Okay. okay. All right. Well, predictions for next time for the book of Joshua? Um, hmm. I guess they're probably going to go down into the milk of or the land of milk and honey. Yeah. Um my guess is there's probably going to be people living there and they're going to have to kill them all. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's a fairly safe guess. I yeah. think Joshua is going to lead the people down into the land of Canaan. They're going to kill everybody and take it over and that'll be basically the end. Uh, that that'll probably be most of Joshua. Yeah. That's my guess. They're going to make them all slaves. Yeah. You think, oh, well, yeah. They'll kill kill some of them, make some of them slaves. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, well, that's something to look forward to. Oh, also next episode, we'll have a special guest, uh, Sky from the channel Vegan Of Course on YouTube. He's going to come and join us, tell us a little bit about his uh, experience with religion, and uh, we'll start Joshua. All right, until next time, stay dumb. Stay dumb. Bye.